welcome to Good Business. I'm Nicole Murray and today we take a look at some very unusual businesses. Well first up we'll be talking to Jason McNamara about JC McNamara and Son Historical Homewares, a very unique business that marries Jason's love of history and photography. A little later we take a journey back to the good old days where we talk to Pastor Fred Mose about the Tivoli Drive-In and finally we'll hear from Masters John Tyso and Sherry Parks about a family business that has been birthed from a lifelong passion. So stay with us for an amazing journey into the unusual businesses. Well Jason McNamara joins us today and tells us a bit more about his unusual business, JC McNamara and Sons Historical Homewares. Hi Jason. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. Thanks for joining thanks us. Thanks for having me. So tell us all about the business, Jason. Well, JC McNamara and Sons started as a, um, a historical uh, twist to a, uh, a fashion uh, homeware um, business. Um, it's, you know, like when you go to places like uh, or province modern country in Ipswich, you go in there and there's a lot of French provincial style things. Mm -hmm. And I looked and I thought, oh, they're really nice, but I have no connection with uh, a, a, the, the Eiffel Tower or something like that. Wouldn't it be nice to have something like an Ipswich building on a cushion or a brand that we all recognise? And sort of, it, it sort of stemmed from there. So I started to do um, historically inspired homewares is pretty much what I put it into the nutshell. Mm. And what sort of uh, products do you sell? Uh, tea towels, um, limited prints, uh, stretch canvases so they can be customised. That they ha have a series which are the old Ipswich pubs. Mm -hmm. So um, people look at it and go, "Oh, I remember that. Or oh, we used to drink there." Or now a lot of these ones are, are demolished and gone now. So yeah. it's a way of um, keeping that history. And like I said, it looks great in people's houses as well. So mm -hmm. and they're all done on 100% uh, uh, linen uh, stretch canvas, done mm -hmm. on uh, UV ink. So they'll last longer than the pubs did. So good quality. Oh yeah, all the way. <laughs> longer than the pubs, I like that. Uh, okay, so tell us about the research that has to go into to doing all this then. Well, the Ipswich Library has a lot of great research um, and I go in there and use the, the Queensland Times microfiche. So mm -hmm. I just randomly take a, a cartridge out, whack it in there and um, and just get lost within the, you know, the old 1800s mm -hmm. um, newspapers. So. Some of the stories are, are great because they, um, you know, they, you get these uh, little murder stuff as well, like over the oh. years, you know. So it's like a, it gets, becomes like a bit of a drama. But amongst that is advertising of um, businesses throughout Ipswich. So I, I keep a log of what street they're in. So they might say um, Nicholas Street, Ipswich. So I gradually mm -hmm. have a list of businesses that used to be there. Yeah. And then uh, if they have a, back in those days, they didn't have many logos. So whenever you see something, it was always someone's hand drawn something. So I try and recreate that from the microfiche to produce onto a tea towel or a t-shirt or something like mm -hmm. that so that people can see what it used to be like. But yeah. the quality of the microfiche is not very good, not so very good. I have to use a bit of artistic license in there. Yeah, and tell us about the photography side. Of well, the photography the side thing is like, I've, my, my base profession is a photographer. So mm -hmm. I, um, and I twisted the two together with my love of Ipswich history. So what I do is I get an old photo from the Ipswich Library, which they have online, it's pictureipswich.com. And I grab a photo of a building that's still there, or not, not necessarily still there, but the location is still there. And I shoot from the exact location of uh, the photographer 100 years ago. So I have to set up the same lens, the same uh, everything, sort of to get the yeah. right lighting and everything. And then I, um, using Photoshop, I then take away what's new and leave what's old there. So wow. you might have someone standing in front of a building a uh, hundred years ago and they're right there next to someone now standing next to, in that building or a car parked out the front. So sometimes I put them both into black and white. So mm. then you can't actually tell what's new, what's not. You have to sort of really think about it and think, well, hang on, why are there cars going up the one-way street when yeah. back in those days it was a two-way street? Two street? Well, that's really fascinating. Yeah. Is, it, is it hard to do? It, it, getting the angles right is hard to do. Mm. That's the only thing. Um, I see, I, I call it um, digital archaeology because oh, like okay. there are things that I see when I do it that um, that I've seen, it's there all the time. There might be a piece of wood on the side of a building that the power lines used to go to. Until mm. you put the old photo there, you have you really realise why the hell that piece of wood was there. Yeah. You always think, oh, that's what that, you know, or a stump on the ground that's still yeah. there that people walk past and they don't even think about it. Wow. So, so what sort of uh, customers do you attract to this type of business? Uh, a bit of everything. Um, mostly people probably 35 and up. So people mm -hmm. who do remember going to that pub or, yeah. or drinking that soft drink or, um, you know, those sort of people. Whereas I'm trying to, with the t-shirt the design, I'm trying to make it a yeah. bit more retro so that people will just wear it because it looks cool. Mm. And then from there, they'll learn about it. Because yeah. everything I sell has a story to it and yeah. they get the little tag and it explains 
what it's all about. So then they have a bit of knowledge and they might pass that on. Mm. So, um, so you've got the older clientele but you're trying to target the younger That's as right, well, because retro, everything's retro. What's yeah. old is what's new, you know, so yeah. it's, um, you know, it's like the old Atari. Everyone loves Atari, mm. but I don't even know what the hell it was. Yeah. You know, it's a drink, wasn't <laughs> it? A drink, yeah. yeah. So what about um, copyright? How does that? Uh, Ipswich Library states what um, copyright, uh, you, who owns it. It's mm. usually either Whitehead Studio, which was a very famous photographing firm, which is still in Ipswich. Mm. And they're very good at you know, allowing people to use it because obviously it's historical and the Ipswich Library. And some of them has been donated by people as well. So yeah. um, we, uh, I just asked the Ipswich Library for permission. Mm. They say yes. And then we go there from there. Go. And you, you've got an online store, yep. so you market online and offline as well? Or? Yeah, it's um, jcmcnamara.com is, mm. is the website. Mm. Um, and we, we sell them through Province Modern Country, the top of town in Ipswich okay. as well. So a bit of offline and online. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right, well, thank you so much, Jason. Excellent. We really appreciate you coming in. It's very unique. I'm glad you got your branding on today. Thank you very much, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Jason. Excellent, thank you. Well, stay with us. After the break, we'll meet up with Sharon Pultz and Pastor Fred Mose out at the Tivoli Drive-In. We'll be right back for more of Good Business. Welcome back to Good Business. Well, do you remember those balmy summer nights with mum and dad taking you in your PJs to the drive-in? Well, you'd pack up your camp chair, sleeping bag and pillow and head off to see a great family flick in the comfort of your own car? Well, Sharon Pilts caught up with the pastor of Rivers of Life Christian Church to talk about an unusual business that their church has become involved in. Welcome to the Tivoli Drive-In Miracle Centre. We are here with Pastor Fred Mose, and tonight we will be going back to the future. But first, Pastor Fred has just started the screening of the original 1971 film, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Pastor Fred, this is not the, this is not quite the usual antics of a pastor, is it? No, there's not too many pastors that run, uh, that screen movies every Saturday night as part of their regular weekly routine. So how did the church become involved with the drive-in? Is it a separate business entity? The church engaged with the drive-in when we purchased the property back in 2003 and it had been derelict for about five years following after closing in the late 90s and overgrown and run down but when we bought it we saw it having heaps of potential as a um, property that could benefit the local community. We wanted to bless the community mm -hmm. spiritually, socially and economically. Um, create income for families and households as well as provide low cost entertainment for families. And we're delighted that the, our primary group of people that come to visit the drive in every Saturday night are families with school-aged children mm -hmm. and it's just a great buzz to see mums and dads coming together with their kids for an affordable night out. From a spiritual point of view it provides us as a church with an opportunity of connecting with these people with the whole concept of a church active in their community mm -hmm. and perhaps changes some of the stereotypes people have about what a church is, how a church behaves, and what a church can do, and um, in the community in which it lives. Entry to the Tivoli is free, so how is it possible to run a business without charging entry? We encourage people to come and shop for food, or buy food and refreshments in the cafe. Right. And essentially, what we offer operate is a cafe restaurant, which provides food for anything up between 400 and 1,000 people on a Saturday night. What about the promotional car stickers? Obviously, all businesses grow by public awareness. Um, and our venue, when we started, was not known by anybody. Part of our vision was to create 
a situation where everyone in Ipswich knew about the Tivoli Miracle Centre, the Tivoli Drive-In, the location and activities of Rivers of Life Christian Church. We wanted to think well beyond the four walls or the limitations of our own congregation. And by opening the gates on a Saturday night to hundreds and hundreds of people from all over the city, and in fact, from all over South East Queensland, um, we are doing that, giving our, our property um, venue, uh, giving our venue um, profile. To that end, um, this year we've become a finalist in the Ipswich Business of the Year Awards for the Chamber of Commerce uh, as the Tourist Business of the Year. Yeah, I'm expecting, I'm confident, well, I'm looking forward to, hoping to be, to win the prizes as the tourist, Tourism Business of the Year for the Ipswich Chamber of Commerce this year. But that provides the Tivoli Drive-In mm -hmm. and the activities we do here, both with um, recognition, particularly in the business community, yeah. and um, hopefully will encourage businesses to have the confidence to support, support what we do with corporate sponsorship, and advertising, on-screen advertising and other forms of support which will make it more viable for us to operate okay. and uh, improve our ability to give money to charity ourselves because 100% of what we earn goes to charity. Well, I see it as families coming together and creating a community experience such as you don't get anywhere else in the city. The whole idea of families mingling, um, it's a safe place for children, a place where they can bring their family pet, where um, mum and dad can sit and enjoy a quiet um, drink, a coffee, whatever, um, while their children are entertained and even stay back and enjoy a second movie while their children sleep in the back of the car. Well, I'll definitely be coming back next week. And if you'd also like a great night out with the family at low cost, then come on out to the Tivoli Drive-In. Back to you in the studio, Nicole. Well, for more information on what we'll be screening, go to tivolidrivein.com.au. Well, stay with us. After the break, we'll find out about Haidong Gumdo, one of the world's fastest growing martial arts. When people have a passion, it's hard not to turn it into a business, even when it's a little unusual. Well, today, we're speaking with Master John Tyso and Master Sherry Parks about how they turned their business passion for martial arts into a thriving business. Welcome to the show, John and Sherry. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, glad to have you on. Yep, pleasure so, to be here. <laughs> so, John, tell us about um, Hedong Gumdo. Is that the correct pronunciation? Correct. Yeah, that's good. Yes. Is it similar to what we see in The Last Samurai? It's very similar. Um, the training techniques are very similar. The actual, uh, the only thing that's different is the actual patterns, the prearranged forms. Mm -hmm. The techniques themselves are the same. Yeah. Okay. And it's from Korea. It's from Korea. Correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So how do people start off with them? Um, Some sport? people may start learning perhaps Taekwondo, mm -hmm. um, Karate, or any variety of martial arts. Mm -hmm. And usually martial arts end up working their way towards sword somewhere along the line. Okay. Um, you can start learning head on gumdo straight from the start without any without any other martial arts experience. Mm -hmm. But a lot of our students come with previous martial arts experience. Okay, all right. And uh, so, from a business perspective, I mean, you've been involved in martial arts for over forty-five years, and Sherry, you for over twenty-five years. So, how did you uh, create a business out of your passion? Well, it started off fairly slowly, I guess. I was a student for many years. I started teaching in schools and, and um, police youth clubs, that sort of thing. And then it gradually, uh, gradually increased. And then I went to World Championships in uh, 2004, where I first met Sherry representing the United States. And after a couple of years, um, Sherry gave her school up in America and uh, came to Australia and joined mine. And mm. we, we married as well. Yeah. Um, and then it grew into a real business. And yeah. plus we, increased, we added another building and we had to increase what we were doing 
to pay for the infrastructure we'd, we'd created. We'd created, yes. yeah. Okay. And now, Sherry, he did drag you away from the States <laughs> and marry you here in Australia. But um, your business in the US, tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that. I had my own club for about six years in the States. Mm -hmm. um, and I had one of my students up to black belt instructor level, and I gave the school to him when I left. You gave it away? I did. Wow. You're a nice teacher. <laughs> I try. <laughs> you try, yeah. And so you're enjoying it here in Australia with this business now? Absolutely. Absolutely. Passion. Okay. So, John, um, with the business, how do you work the roles between the two of you as husband and wife in the business in terms of strengths, weaknesses, that kind of right. thing? Right. Sh Sherry's more artistic than I am. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the art side of martial arts is really yeah. Sherry's department. And, and mine may be, may be more technical, technical. Um, though Sherry's fairly technical as well, so I'm probably stealing a bit of ground there. <laughs> um, but definitely she's more arty. Mm. Um, she's also quite good for attracting new students. Mm -hmm. She's good at talking people into bringing their friends and, yeah. and that sort of thing. I, I'm probably not quite as good at that. Yeah. Uh, we generally complement each other quite well on everything. Mm. During class as well, she'll take one group, I'll take another group. Mm. And, and she'll instill something into them that may be different to what I would have done. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it, a different thing, yeah. more artistic mm. or more flow or more flair, or as opposed to more basic grunt. More basic, yeah. yeah. And so you obviously work a little bit separate then, so that you're not too much. We work in each on, the, on often work on the same mat, but mm. in, with separate groups. We mm. take separate mm. groups. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, how do you market the business then? Through local papers, um, flyers for schools. Mm -hmm. Um, word, word of mouth, uh, we have a van that's sign written quite well, mm -hmm. that actually is why we end up here. Oh, okay, so it's driving sort, around. They saw the van, yes. Yeah. yeah. The van is pretty distinctive. Um, it's actually a bus, we can take a group to tournaments or, or to mm -hmm. a display at a school or something, we can just all load up in the bus and all head off together. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. So, and then word of mouth and people... Yes, what word you of do. mouth. Word of mouth is probably the main thing. Yeah. And yeah. what about leveraging the business? Um, you've got this the sword section of the business. What else do you have? Okay, we, we, uh, I'll, I'll start that sort of from the beginning. Originally, because I was old and grumpy, I, des I, des <laughs> old and grumpy. I decided I was only going to teach adults and teach the adults sword, and that's all I was going to do. And I was happy with that. Mm -hmm. And then I met Sherry, and we and she was still teaching kids, and I we now we now we teach all ages all the way through. I, I've, I'm back to doing that as well, and yeah. we've also introduced other martial arts that we've done in the past mm -hmm. that we hadn't, that I hadn't been teaching. Mm -hmm. We now do judo and jiu-jitsu and karate, as, as well as and taekwondo, as mm -hmm. well as the sword. Yeah, that helps pay, pay the bills, helps pay, helps, helps fund, pay the fund, <laughs> fund the infrastructure that we've created. Yeah, and so how are you going to grow the business then? Here? Well, really the same way. What we'd like to see is our is our students who are we've got a lot of students at very high levels now. Mm -hmm. Um, including two world champions. Wow. We'd like to see um, more clubs. Yeah, more clubs spread from these people mm -hmm. in time. From students. From from students setting yeah. up their own establishments. Almost like a franchise. Sort of. Sort yeah, of. sort of. Yeah. Sword franchise. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. And they, have you spoken to them about their, their sort of? Yes. They, we we make it too comfortable for them where they are, and they don't want to leave the nest. Oh, okay. So, so it's taking yeah. a little bit of little bit of nudging. A little bit mm -hmm. of nudging. So you yes. obviously want it to be expanded. And oh, it's definitely. It's a fast growing sport. Yes. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not just for our club. I'm also the state president for Haydong Gumdo, and I'd, I'd like to see it grow from the Federation's point of view as well, not just from our own club's mm -hmm. perspective. So where's the Federation then? Is Sorry? That the Federation, is that in Korea? No, no, we've got, we've got a national one and we've got state oh, ones got as state. well. Yeah. But there is, our main one is in Korea. Mm -hmm. In yeah. Korea, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so with, let's have a look at the equipment now. All right, yes. <laughs> we've got this. Now, is this a traditional... This is, this is tr traditional armour. Yeah. We actually have uh, more modern armour, which I didn't bring. Uh, it's it's more um, plasticised, I suppose you'd say. Mm. It looks more modern. So it's padded and plastic. More high tech. And, yeah, a bit more high tech. Yeah. But the old stuff's still good and much more interesting to look at. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So what do the, so you've got this and then and what else? And there's the chest armour and there's the there's the the, the, the skirt if the you skirt. like. And mm. um, our armour, the more modern armour, yeah. actually has has protection for your whole body. It has it has your forearms covered, Legs. your elbows, your shins. Yeah. It has everything covered because mm. there's. In our, in our sword style, there's nowhere that you can't hit them. 
Okay. So, that, so the armour is more protective. Yeah. Um, this is tradition, originally kendo armour, which, which is the same as what we used to use. Mm. And you couldn't hit in the back of the head, for example, because there's absolutely no protection to the back of the head at all. Yes. We don't want to strike to the back of the no, head. No, no, <laughs> yeah. So um, as you can see, it's like it's completely open. Oh, I won't pick that one up. It's, yeah. it's got stuff sitting on it. Yeah, so it's open it's at completely the back. open at the back. Yeah. So they, they, their kendo is restricted to the fact that they have all the strikings from the front, three main points, the head, mm. head, the wrists and the body. Yeah. Um, whereas That's ours good. is very similar, but there's no, no limitation as to where you can strike or get a score. Yeah, okay. And so how do the students start off? Obviously they don't start off straight away on the sword. No, they start off with a wooden, we didn't bring one of those, yeah, wooden a wooden training sword, sword mm -hmm. which we use really a lot all the way through. In a class situation where you've got a lot of people in a confined space, you obviously wouldn't want them running around with a live, with a sharp blade. Mm. So a wooden sword gives you a safety margin. It still stings if it whacks you, yeah. but it doesn't do any real harm. Yeah. Um, I still teach using a wooden sword nearly all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, Sherry uses a, a metal yeah. a metal sword, but not sharp. Yeah. Yeah. We have we have one, pass, pass on up. This this sort of sword, for example, is not sharp. It's completely blunt and it's, oh. it's, it's meant for practice. Oh, okay. Right. This one here, which I might pull out, is actually razor sharp. Okay, so that one doesn't cut. You don't that know. one won't cut anything, no. Mm. Okay. It'd probably bruise. Mm. And what sort of students do you attract in terms of ages? Everything from... Everything. Everything yeah. from probably... What's our youngest student? Four? How old is Denzel? Mm -hmm. uh, four. Four? Yes. Four years old? <laughs> yes. Wow. I wouldn't normally take students that young, mm. but he's got older siblings that come. Oh, okay. And he's been at the side breaking his neck to do something for ages now, so we <laughs> thought, well, he can give it a go. He can I think our oldest yeah. student uh, our oldest is student. 60. Oh, yeah, right. Somewhere around there. 60. Mm. Wow, that's a mm. big gap. Yeah, isn't that a big mm. age group? Yes, yeah. yeah. And how do they, um, do they stay on and want to learn and keep going, or do they come and go? Oh, they, you know, all martial arts or anything gets people come and go, but we have mm. a pretty good retention rate. Mm -hmm. We've got people going through, we've got... Uh, next weekend, we've got um, our nationals here in Brisbane, actually, at the Logan yeah. Sports Complex, just near, mm. what's the address? On Browns Plains Road mm -hmm. at Crestmead. And we're having a grading there as well. And we've got, we've got seven, seven. seven people grading for first dan, for first oh. degree black belt. Mm -hmm. uh, four. four for second dan, one for third and one for fourth. Okay, wow. And we've got uh, Korean masters out. Uh, especially yeah. for the occasion from Korea. Wow, and you've won a lot of medals too, world championship yes, medals. Yes, we, we mm. our, the Australian team at, at the, mm. the last world championships, only a few couple of months ago, won more than the Ameri United States team, the um, Canadian team, mm. the Mexican team, um, and half of Europe as well. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that's, yeah. Well, that's fascinating. Well, thank you so right, much thank for you. joining us. We really appreciate you coming on and showing us all this. It looks all great. Right. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Sherry. Thank thanks, you. John. Well, you can contact John and Sherry on swordsman.com.au. Well, what a fabulous show it has been. So if you've had second thoughts about starting a business that you thought was a little unusual, we hope you realise that a business that starts from a passion is bound to succeed if you've got the business backing also. We will leave you with a very special look at the work and passion of Masters John and Sherry. But if you'd like any more information on anything you've seen today, you can contact us at goodbusinesstv.com.au. Well, it's been a pleasure to be your host and I'll see you next week for more Good Business. Bye-bye.